We talked about adults and having trouble sleeping, or uh, we got into snoring quite a bit, I think, last time you were here, uh, Dr. Sharp. What is that a th thing where you snore and you stop breathing? Right, sleep apnea that's uh, affecting some five million people around the country. And you can die from that? You certainly can. You certainly can. In fact, this is a disorder that uh, we tended to think was benign. We tended to think that snoring is something that is just a laughable kind of a condition. And a pain in the neck uh, to your partner, right? But in fact, for many people, it is very, very serious. And in fact, when this occurs in children, we tend to laugh about it even more. We just, it's just something that uh, people ignore or maybe just talk to their friends about. Even little babies snore, though. Some little babies do, mm -hmm. yes. And what we've begun to find out is that when children snore, they also can occasionally have sleep apnea. They can have pauses in their breathing, and uh, there's very few good things that can happen if you're not breathing, so. Do uh, uh, problems that children have in sleeping, like insomnia, sleepwalking, bedwetting, can that carry on into adult and affect their life forever? Oh, most certainly. Uh, uh, one establishes patterns in children uh, in childhood, and uh, Poor sleeping in children often, uh, in childhood, often uh, carries on into adulthood. At your center, though, when you're treating a child, the child doesn't come to the center quite the same as an adult. You're working through a second party there, aren't sure, you? Sure, that's one of the things that's unique about the pediatric clinic is that we have to get most of the information from the parents. You have a particular thing that we'd like to accentuate today, and that is the bedwetting problem, because that does affect a great many people, all the way up to six, seven years of age, and sometimes older. Well, in fact, some 10% of children at age six are still wetting the bed. Is that a sleep disorder? Well, it's a, it is in the, in the sense that it's something that's occurring at night mm -hmm. uh, during sleep, and uh, it's something that most children will eventually outgrow. But by the time a child is six or seven or eight or 12, uh, there are all kinds of social and psychological implications, and we need to help Mother Nature along sometimes. Yeah, because actually, other than the mess and the social problem, like can't go to camp, can't stay overnight with a buddy. It really presents problems in that respect. And also, as they get older, they become embarrassed, and sometimes it accentuates the problem, doesn't well, it? Well, also, siblings tend to make the situation more uncomfortable. That's also a problem for the parents to deal with uh, over a period of time. So it's important uh, at some point to uh, intervene if a child continues to wet the bed. You have a regular program that you follow to eliminate this problem? Well, there have been a number of advances in the treatment of enuresis uh, over the years, and what we have done in our pediatric program is incorporate almost all of them uh, in a multi-dimensional approach, and uh, our batting average is pretty good. We, we like to think that we dry them out. <laughs> so, uh, we have a young man who is willing to come down here today, and I got to tell you, this really requires a great deal of courage on his behalf. His name is Jeff Sigmund. Is he a patient from your clinic? Yes, he's uh, one of our favorite patients, as a matter of fact. Uh, um, where is Jeff? He's right over here. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Nice to have you here. How old are you, Jeff? Fine. How, how old are you, hon? Seven. And you, you had a problem, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And just couldn't fight it on your own. How long did it take you to go through uh, Dr. Sharp's program there? Three months. Three months, and now you don't have the problem anymore. Mm -mm. Now you can lead a normal life. Do you feel better about yourself? Yes. And, and now you feel like you're more free to go to camp, stay overnight with a friend. It, it'll change your life, won't it? Yes. Are you proud of yourself? Yes. Well, we're very proud of him, too. He's one of our stars. Tell us a little something about what the process involved. Well, it involves a multi-dimensional approach, which includes uh, conditioning, bladder training exercises, various other kinds of exercises. Um, there's regular contact with uh, a pediatrician as well as uh, a urologist. And uh, we, we keep daily logs and a daily regimen. Um, and uh, we find that over a period of time, there is a gradual decrease in the amount of bedwetting. Bedwetting tends to occur later and later uh, in the night. And we find many ways to reinforce the progress. Now, sometimes it is because of the disease. Other times, it's strictly uh, uh, psychosomatic or just a habit. Or... It can be a disease. Uh, it can be psychological. It's important to distinguish between two kinds of bedwetting, primary or secondary. In primary, the child has never had a period of dryness for any, ex any extended period. And in secondary, they have had a, they've been dry for a long time and then suddenly start again. For example, when there's a birth of a, another baby in the house, suddenly a, the older child may start wetting the bed again. A disruption. So we have to distinguish between those two kinds and treat them accordingly. Are you Mrs. Sigmund? Good, how many children do you have, Mrs. Sigmund? Jeff, give mom the mic for a minute, would you? I have two children. Two children. Is Jeff the older or the younger? He's the older. 
So uh, was this a problem that started again when the second one was born or never did? No, it never went away. He had the problem. How old is your second child? He's six. And no problem at all? And he never wet. Never did have the problem. So this intensified the problem Did he kind of tease him a little bit about yes. it? Yes. That didn't help either, did it? No. Well, I know that Jeff is very, very proud of himself, and I think he's a good example. He's wearing a shirt that says to sleep. Is that something you got at the sleep disorder clinic? Right. What's it say on the shirt? Stand up, Jeff. It's uh, different languages with the word sleep on it. I uh -huh. think we have one for you. <laughs> we, uh, we do have one for you, Bob. This is, uh, it says to sleep in 13 languages, and then across the back, it says Kreinler Sandman Team, and it has a uh, sleep cycle, and we give these to our... Uh, young patients that come through and also anyone else that helps us well, out. Well, since so last week I stopped wetting the you. bed, I am very happy to have this, <laughs> Dr. Sharp. The Kreinler uh, the, uh, Medical Center is what located where? It's part of what hospital? Well, the uh, Sleep Disorders Center is part of the Jewish Hospital. And it is available to the general public oh, to absolutely. call and inquire? Absolutely. I appreciate it. Hope you come back and talk some more about it, Thank will you? Thank you very much. Dr. Martin Sharp, director of the Sleep Disorders Center, Kreinler Medical Center at the Jewish Hospital. We'll be right back. Don't go away.